okay, I'm going to install some carpeting in my office. It takes very little tools to do it. A scissors, a tape measure, a solid knife, meaning not the kind that you push in and out, but this blade stays stationary for a firm cut. And this is two-sided tape. I'd like to show you how I'm going to do this. First thing I'm going to do is I've got this piece of carpeting that I got from the garbage from Rosemont Horizon. They do exhibits and they throw it away all the time. It's about 16 foot long, about 9 foot wide. Now what I'm going to do is measure it approximately to see if it's how it's going to fit into the room. Oh. Okay, it's uh, 16 foot 9 inches. I'm going to show you, take a look at the room here before I install it to see how big this room is. I'm going to run it long ways. I want to come into my doorway here a little bit. And this is a uh, 15 foot 9. So the piece of carpeting is one foot longer. That's what I need. Okay. I bring the carpeting into the room. I'm just going to roll it up, throw it in there, and then roll it and see how close I get to a fit. I'd like to show you before I get started, there's a big hole in this carpeting right here where a forklift burned out on it. I'm going to go ahead and install the carpeting and afterwards I'm going to cut this piece out, overlay a piece, and put it in. Now this particular project I'm doing, I'm doing it without carpet padding. It's an office. It's also, we use it as a workshop. So, shirt measurement I have is that doorway. That's where I'm going to bring the carpeting up to. So I'm going to tuck the carpeting this way. Lift up on my corners on both of these. Like this. Okay, first I'm fitting it in a sense. Now I'm going to push it back. I'm going to put the first piece of tape over there. Just kind of take the tape and lay it out. Push it down. Peel the backing off of this tape before I put the rug there. And this is double face tape. You can buy it at, at your home supply stores. Buy it at any carpeting place, but it's not extremely cheap. But well. Sorry, but I can't find it. It's so gooey. I'm not getting it. Okay, if 
finally got it started here. Lay that back down there again. If you were putting padding under this carpeting instead, which I'm not, you put the padding right here first, and then you would allow a couple inches to touch this down to. Now I've already fitted this, and I know it's going to fit. I'm just going to pull it up. Look, I'm over extending it a tiny little bit there because I'm going to show you how quickly that trims right here. Okay, now I'm going to work out my first corner really simply. I'm going to back it off and I know that I have to cut it approximately here. Now I've got a brand new blade in here. Makes the job a lot easier. Before I do this piece here, I always want to test it. See how close I am. Now, I know I'm going to cut this edge off, so I can do that now. When you're cutting, you don't want to cut down. You want to cut over this way. All you do is push it in, make sure you're there, and just go a few inches at a time. Push it in, go a few inches at a time, like I say. You can return this way, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm following a line here, so I can, instead of fighting the corner, I'm going to crease that with the back of my saw blade, it's our knife blade. I cannot stress to you how important it is, first off, to have a solid, fixed blade, and uh, secondly, to have a brand new blade. If this gets a couple of scratches on it, it's well worth pulling it out. Last thing you want to do, and I don't want to say this, is cut yourself. Anybody can do this. A housewife can do it. You can do it. So I'm going to work my way around these corners here. The same way. I'm just going to fold it back. Pick a line someplace close. Pull. Check it. I'm cutting through the back side. Now, I'm going to cut this one long here. And then I'm going to trim it into place. Now, see that corner here? I need to find that corner like this. Now, I've got this piece positioned. Let me go back and get this corner cut out here. Same thing. You want to take your saw backwards, your saw, I'm sorry, your blade, and, and press it into the corner. Now, If you notice, I'm cutting right into the baseboard, but the carpeting's going to cover that cut. It just gives me a place to stop. Like this. <coughs> then I'm going to cut this last one out. Same thing, I'm pushing back. A couple like that. Don't have your hand where... You can cut this out now. And I'm cutting into the baseboard. It's clear where this is going to go. So. Now. Right here is where I already have tape. But you can see I'm not right on it. 
So I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to press it down a little bit before I make this final cut here. I'm going to cut it. The tape is very forgiving because I'm pressing it by hand and it's not really getting a good bond. But when I put 100 pounds of my weight or 200, it's going to lock that in place. You see, I'm still, I'm still pulling it up and working with the tape itself. Okay. So, i got to figure out a better way to do this here. I don't know if you can see here, but this floor, I gave it a coat of primer paint because I want my tape to stick. I don't want to put tape over a dirty floor. Whether you're putting it on concrete like I'm doing in this application, or if you're putting it over wood, you want to save yourself a lot of trouble later. You can primer that. Okay, this time, I'm not planning to uh, lose my open. This stuff's so sticky. It's got stuck to my fingers here, but that's minor. Wherever you touch it. If you notice, I don't have to be right in the Kobe there. Same thing here, you see? That little dust. Just try to pull that away. Tiny little bit. Now I've got a hold of the tape without having a bite on it every time I work on it. that I'm going to put a piece across here. This piece is ready to install. Now, all you have to do is step on it. Same here. I'm going to dress up some of those burrs when they get the whole project down. Okay, I'm over here. Even though I'm going to cut this piece out, I'm still going to install it. A standard way to cut the corner, the outside corner, is just to find the corner and pull. You don't want to get your finger wrong spot on the blade. See right here I've cut a small V and like I said I'm going to try to make it look like I'm installing it. Now I want to have a smooth surface here. That's pretty easy. You just walk it like this. You see that wrinkle? You just walk it out a little bit and it's going to stay exactly where you laid it. It almost moved not at all. So. There's no tape underneath here when I'm doing this. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut this out again. Take my blade backwards. It's getting repetitive here. This time, I'm going to cut all the way down the whole piece. Okay, keep watching. In a few minutes, we're going to do this seam. I'll show you how quick and easy that goes. Okay, now I'm going to cut in a couple of scrap pieces of carpeting. What I've done here is I've cut two pieces that are larger than what fit into the room by both sides, longer and wider. Let's get close. If you see again here on this piece, I've run the tape there 
on the corner, same here. And I'm going to push this piece of carpeting into the corner. Press it down because I'm going to be making a cut here. Now, if you notice here, these two are overlapping a little bit, so you need to get a straight edge. You can use a small square or a big square, or if you have a level, that'll work. And take a look here, what I've done is I've overlapped the two pieces by quite a bit and you can feel the lump so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to freehand this I'm going to line it up and put my knee on the straight edge I'm going to cut through both pieces of carpeting at the same time I can feel the floor below where I'm at on it I'm always cutting twice on this so I don't care if you're putting in carpeting or floor tile. When you make a cut where they're overlapping, now look, I'm going to move my straight edge. So I want to mark where my piece ends so I don't miss cut. So I'm just going to pick up cutting right at the same spot. And I'm, like I said, I'm cutting twice to make sure. Now, one thing I did while you weren't watching was I changed blades. So I'm just going to pull this piece off, and when I pull the bottom piece off, other than it might not be cut perfect, it's cut exactly where the other piece is. And watch how beautiful the seam is going to be here. No. No, look, I'm just pulling it out and pressing that, and I'm going to put some glue down this time. Now I'm cutting back here because I'm going to be installing that other piece. So what I did is I went to the hardware store and I bought the cheapest adhesive that I could buy. This power grip. It's three three dollars, three fifty, real cheap. But make sure it says clear on it because if you get white. You don't, you don't want to expose that seam. So I'm going to basically make an angle cut because this is what I'm used to. It doesn't matter how you cut this. And on your caulk gun, you want to make sure that inside there, it looks white, but make sure it's poked through. Now, it's real simple. It doesn't matter if you touch the glue to the carpeting or anything. I'm going to go down both sides with a little bead like this. I'm making this look easy, but it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. Okay, that's one side. And now I'm going to do the same on the other side. Except this time, I'm going to come right up on this. And that's all it takes. You know, put the caulk gun to the side someplace where it's not going to... Now look, look at this. You just uh, press this. You see here I got a little bit on there. Just take that off your finger. Rub it around. It'll disappear. Okay. Now, I'm going to step on this again. But this time, I don't want to step on it with my shoes. I'm going to lay that piece of scrap carpeting that I just pulled off of here right on top there. That way I've got something that absorbs the glue. Now you got to remember, after you glue something like this, you really want to wait overnight till you move furniture in here. Now could, could it be any easier to do a seam like that? So I'm going to go ahead and finish this job out. So the last thing I'm going to do, and I'd like to show you now, is when I'm all done with the job, 
I'm going to go around the edges with this clear. And right on top where you can see it, I'm just going to put a small bead of caulk everywhere. And if you were thinking to yourself, well, that tape doesn't look very strong, this will help lock it into place. And it's going to dry. It'll be clear. That's just a trick that you learn. It prevents dirt from falling in the crack. You see here where it's open a little bit on that seam? Well, the color of this caulk, you see how I had it at an angle again? I'm just going to push that angle in there. And you can use as much caulk as you want. Now, like I said, this is power grip. It's adhesive, construction adhesive. It's not a caulk. Oh, put that away and I'm going to go ahead and finish my job up. Thank you very much. Anybody can do this. Now I'm going to fix this hole here. What I did is I have this extra cut off scrap and I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it a little large. You can cut this with a scissors or a knife, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to pre-cut this right in place. The same way as I did before. I'm using this particular square. It really doesn't matter which square you're using. I'm just going to cut both pieces of carpeting at the same time. Now this one I can actually move and just show you what I'm doing. See what I've done here? Now I'm just going to pick a line here, cut the other dimension. Of course, you're probably saying to yourself, Greg has all the tools. Well, I've been doing this for 37 years. Yes, I do have all the tools. And tools make it a lot, lot easier whenever you're doing any kind of small job. Again, just cut it twice, always. Now, I don't know if you, you can't see this at home, but my, my blade is getting worn off because it's going up against concrete. Okay, I'm going up to there. Now look, I'm finding that hole again. I'm gonna bring that over. Now look, I've got that piece off. And the same with this. It, it might not have gone all the way through, but I'm gonna dress it up. Pulling it. Now, I've got it cut here. I said my blade wasn't sharp, you can see. Or I've got a little bit of a problem here. There's really nothing to worry about. Same here. If my blade was sharp, I wouldn't be doing this. If you don't have a blade, you can do the whole job with any kind of a kitchen scissors. down again. Press it, press it down. And this stuff is sticky. If you don't have the tape, you can do the whole job just by using caulk. Now, I'm ready to just I'm not going to pull it all the way up, but I'm going to put glue on this first piece here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Because I'm putting so much on there, you've got to be awfully careful not to let it ooze. It's not going to hurt it. Get there, I'm ready. Wherever you set this down, you want to make sure that it doesn't drip on your new carpeting. And here's a piece I cut out. If you look here, there's a few burr, like that thread there. Don't worry about that till after the caulk dries. 
and I'm, I know I'm calling it caulk, but I want to call it construction adhesive. Okay, there it is. Now, remember what I said. When you put the piece down, you want to find a scrap of carpeting. I generally just get the same one that I pulled out. Press it either direction, it doesn't matter. And you do want to stomp on it so you got a really good fit. Like this. And then the, the final part of this is putting a little edging on here. Thank you very much. They do only carpeting. I do every trade. All you need is to know how to do it, and you can do any job by yourself. Every trade, whether it's carpentry, plumbing, drywall, painting, it's just doing one little thing and getting good at it. You don't have to be good at it at your own house as you do if you're doing it for somebody else because you're the guy that's going to be happy or not happy with it.